Yeah, I, I once had this acquaintance, the one who encouraged me to write the book about the care and feeding of a spirit board. He used to publish one sentence truths about tarot cards, painfully incorrect. Even I, on the permanent record for being willing to entertain almost any possibility, found his statements to be outrageous balderdash. It popped into my head how he could change merely one character in each sentence to make them thought-provoking instead of just plain wrong. However, I don't like giving unsolicited advice, especially since it... Especially since... <laughs> Especially since said advice sprang from a negative impression. After all, his statements were his own business. But in a moment of weakness, I really wanted to fix this problem. So I suggested he might first make a symbolic micropayment of one penny in my tip jar, so as to officially solicit my advice and otherwise no other the Otherwise, the wonderment could happily remain. He responded that he was totally lost, totally spelled with eight O's by what I suggested, but that I shouldn't take that as an insult because there was a beauty in my cryptic writing. Cryptic? I reiterated that I only give advice when it's solicited, that even a single copper penny would constitute solicitation for advice. I reiterated that the amount didn't matter, that it was the symbolic transference of metal that would count. But if he was still in the dark, no worries, because none of this was meant to be enigmatic in any way. He was like, I would never dream of paying for solicited advice. He wondered why I required to be paid, even with a penny. He was like, Surely we haven't entered into such a world where artists or friends cannot simply discuss and trade ideas without infernal currency? He added, granted, if advice is worth being paid for, then one shouldn't pay for it and instead take the time to meditate on the issue and come up with an answer by oneself. I had to mention that it's proven that people value what they pay for more than what they get for free and that unsolicited advice is a form of busybodiness, but that he should indeed come up with the answer himself and save the penny for a better cause. He wouldn't let it go. He said he kept wondering why I considered my pointer for him advice and not merely a suggestion. And he returned to the concept of artists corresponding and enjoying inspirational tidbits without being cheapened by the exchange of metal he said again that he had never paid for someone's advice. He said that my own advice, should someone come calling for it, and that's a troubling qualifier he added there, is of course worth whatever price I put on it. He added, but, yes, that conjunction that negates everything before it. Since he and I had been corresponding for several months, he should think that money was out of the question. He wondered whether he was missing out on a ceremonial aspect of passing metal back and forth. Then he proposed that I had meant it all merely playfully, not literally. He couldn't imagine the two of us in a coffee shop, trading ideas via micropayments. So I responded that apparently our respective takes on money are different enough that we ought to just let this one pass. If we were in a coffee shop, I said, I'd let you buy me a coffee as a token of respect. It's not about the amount, but the symbolism. In my world, money is a set of arbitrary tokens, and I frequently pay my closest friends for their talents. I had, in fact, recently hired three friends to help edit and brainstorm expansions of the Young Wizard's Hexapedia, allowing each to set his or her own fee for the time and even more valuable minimalism. Occasionally, I'll offer to comp my own services when a project is enjoyable enough, as I did for a novelist friend who commissioned me to create a get-out-of-hell-free certificate to promote her new book, 
though she insisted on paying me anyway. Nobody in my circle gets tainted by metal, nor do any of us sit counting our tokens like misers. My friends are tops in their fields, and we all tend to put out more than we get back from others. So at the end of the day, we put our money where our mouths are, and we make exchanges that are technically beyond price. Last I checked, this is just how the world works. So you've never paid for advice, I added. You think giving me a penny would be paying for advice, even though a penny is patently worthless. And you'll never find out what I might have revealed for a symbol. If that was a win for you, then congratulations. I don't get it, but I guess we're tied on that one. But he still wouldn't let it go. If a penny is worthless, he said, why even suggest it in the first place? This implies that your advice is worth something that is worthless. Why would you allow me to buy a coffee for you out of respect? Why can't I buy you a coffee as a friend? I was thinking, this guy doesn't know what respect means, and apparently also hasn't noticed that we're not two colleagues or equals, but rather what the Japanese would call a senpai kohei relationship, mentor and protege. He added, if one were put a price on advice or suggestions or discussion or artistic inspiration or friendship, one, one would be a very poor man indeed. Not only in pennies, but in spirit. Dig noted. And then he said something about how apparently my communication came with the price and that he'd learned his lesson at his own expense. Heavens to Murgatroyd. Grant, granted, Maybe it was weird for me to ask for a penny. In all fairness, I've never presented as normal. But surely it was obviously not about money grubbing, but about the symbolic gesture. And surely the trappings are obvious. A penny for your thoughts, the business of a magician asking for a coin to do a trick, the concept of transmuting a base metal into gold, the idea of the lucky penny, the fortune teller of old asking for her palm to be crossed with silver, and, and so on. To quote the laughing sage Matsumoto Hitoshi, what an idiot! Uh, you, you know, don't you, that the phone wire is not connected to anything? that we're on the air.